we're going to take a look at a kind of optimization problem where we find a maximum or a minimum. Like we have in the past, only this time, there's going to be a constraint on what our variables can be. So for example, in this question, when they give us a constraint of 2x plus y equals 6 and ask us to maximize or minimize this function, what they're really saying is, of all the points for which 2x plus y equals 6, of which there are infinitely many, of course, which of these would result in the largest and smallest value of the function that we're trying to optimize? This is the goal that we're trying to achieve. Well, a mathematician named Lagrange and many others involved, I'm sure, devised a system where we could maximize a function based on some given other constraint equation. And this is the system that they created. It wouldn't mean a lot to you at first, but let's just go through the problem here and see what Lagrange and others figured out. First of all, we have to create this equation right here, which is going to be a function of our variables x and y and a new function, a new variable called lambda, presumably after Lagrange, because lambda is, after all, a Greek letter L. So here we have to create this equation using f as the function we want to optimize and g as our constraint. And this is what I ended up getting, and I'll explain where I, where I got the g of x. Well, first of all, notice the lambda here in the equation. And secondly, this g of x actually came from this notion in their formulation of what we're supposed to do. And that is that we have to set our constraint equation equal to g zero to find out what g is. Here's our constraint equation. If we set it equal to zero, then g is the function on the left side of it. So now what we'll do is we will put the g function that we found here into our Lagrange equation. Here you'll see that I did some basic algebra distributed the lambda. And now I have to take the three partial derivatives of the L function or the Lagrange function. And as prescribed in the system on the right side of your page, you'll notice the red. I have to set each of these equal to zero. I recommend pausing for a moment and just confirming that these partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and lambda are correct, just for your own self. And now that you've verified that these partial derivatives are correct, we're going to solve the system of equations found by setting each one of them equal to zero. This shouldn't really be surprising. We've always set derivatives equal to zero when we wanted to find maximum and minimum points. This really isn't a new idea. Sometimes the algebra can be really annoying as it is in this case, uh, when I solved this system of equations for x, y, and lambda, I had quite a bit of work, and I got these ordered triples as my results. If you'd like to pause and analyze all the nasty high school algebra, feel free. And now that we've solved the system of equations, these values at the end are our lambda values. And in this course, in a Calculus two course, we don't care a lot about the values of lambda. We care more about what the values of x and y are. Remember, we're trying to optimize this function of x and y based on a constraint that has x and y. Lambda is not part of the answer. Lambda is just a vehicle created by Lagrange and others to help us find the answer we want. So these ordered triples really just tell me what x and y might be in order to maximize or possibly minimize the function. Remember, when we set our derivatives equal to zero and solve, we're generally getting a maximum or a minimum, but we don't often know which one it is. So what we have to do to find out what it is is to plug in nearby points. Watch and see. Here's the original function that we're trying to optimize. We'll start with the first critical point we found, 2, 2. When we plug in 2, 2 to this function, it turns out to work out to have a value of 96. The question is, is that a maximum or a minimum? 
Well, what you can do, if you'll notice the instructions in the upper right corner, is we can plug in nearby points. What exactly does nearby mean? Well, I decided that a number nearby 2 would be 2.1. So to determine if this was a maximum or a minimum, I plugged in this point here, which matches the constraint equation. Now, it would be very natural at this point for anyone watching this video to be confused where I got 2.1 and 1.8 for my x and y values. I simply picked 2.1 because it was close to 2. And then I plugged 2.1 into my constraint equation. I did some algebra, work not shown here, and got that y would have to equal 1.8 for that constraint equation to be true. So pick a point that's nearby your critical point, but also that makes the constraint equation true, which I've done here. There's nothing magic about this. It's just a little trial and error and just find some nearby decimals that satisfy your constraint equation. The point is, when I plug these into the equation, I got something higher than 96. What this tells us is that points near our critical point are slightly higher than the critical point itself. Doesn't it stand to reason if nearby points are higher, then that function value is a minimum. I'll do the same for the point 6, negative 6. I plugged 6, negative 6 into the function, and I got a value of 864. This is more than likely going to be a maximum, since it's so much higher than the 96 of the other point. But just to be sure, I found points near 6, negative 6 to see what would happen. When I, when I found a point near the constraint equation that worked, I got 6.1, negative 6.2. If you're wondering where I got these decimals, I randomly picked 6.1 because it was close to x equals 6. I plugged 6.1 into the constraint equation, solved for y, and I got negative 6.2. Once finding a point near my critical point that satisfies the constraint equation, I plugged it into the function, and I got an answer. And you'll notice that answer is a little bit lower than 864. Since it's a little bit lower, it's safe to assume that any point nearby would be slightly lower than this critical point, and wouldn't we then conclude that that critical point is a maximum? Here's another problem where we're going to use the Lagrange function to minimize the cost. It's sort of a more real-life example. Pause while you read. So here's our cost equation. And it depends on x and y, which are the number of widgets produced in two different cities. Now, wouldn't it be reasonable, follow me on this thought experiment for just a moment. If our goal were to minimize cost, might it not be advantageous to set x and y equal to zero, in other words, to produce nothing? That is a great way to minimize costs. Not always great for business, though. Businesses have constraints that they have to work within. One of the constraints in this problem is the fact that we're going to be producing 96 widgets per week. So we can't have x and y be zero. So we're not only minimizing costs here, but we're minimizing costs relative to a real-life constraint. Now, ultimately, we're going to have to set up a Lagrange function here where we add to the cost function lambda times some constraint function. Constraint function. But what is that constraint function? Well, doesn't it come from the fact that we're producing 96 widgets per week? And that's spread over both cities. Since x and y are the number produced in each city, it stands to reason that x plus y would have to be 96. That is our constraint. We always want to set our constraint equation equal to zero to find out what the g of x is, which in this case would be that function. And now this Lagrange function will help us not only find the minimum cost in general, but find the minimum cost for a specific constraint that has to be satisfied. Here goes all of the algebra that we saw before. Distribute the lambda. Take the partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and lambda 
I once again recommend hitting pause and verifying this yourself so that your brain can catch up. And now that we have our partial derivatives, we can set them equal to zero. And I did solve this system of equations, and this is the result that I got. A lot of algebra went into that. You can pause if you'd like to analyze all that high school level stuff. And now that I know the critical point, i.e. the solution to this partial derivative equation, I know that since X was the number of widgets produced in Denver and Y was the number of widgets produced in Baltimore, I know what I have to do to minimize my cost. I could plug in a nearby point and verify that it's a minimum, but I won't do that here. I will, however, take the cost equation, plug in 17 and 79 to find out that my minimum cost in producing 96 total widgets is $8,000. $796 per week. <laughs>